Welcome to the Concussion Summit. I'm here with Dr. McAuliffe from the Neurologic Wellness Institute in Wooddale, Illinois, and he's here to speak today about dizziness and concussions. About 30 to 50% of people who have dizziness don't have a diagnostic criteria for the typical dizziness conditions that are out there. And when you look at post-concussion syndrome, there's a lot of reasons you can be dizzy, some more easy to diagnose, some more complicated to diagnose. And then there are some dizziness conditions, some easier to treat, some more complicated to treat. And when you look at a concussion patient, these patients can present with a number of different types of dizziness, sometimes multiple types of dizziness at once. And so I'm really excited to talk to Dr. McAuliffe or Dr. Mack and see what he has to say about dizziness and concussion. How are you doing, Dr. Mack? Good, good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. And so why don't you get started? Um, how often... Are you seeing dizziness in your concussion patients? And what kind of dizziness presentations do they come with? And what are the similarities between your concussed patients who have dizziness? And then what would be the differences between them? Gotcha, so we're seeing a lot of dizziness in most of our concussion patients. Um, so every day in the clinic, we're having concussion patients come in. Um, most of the time, they'll have dizziness associated with it. And we're seeing a lot more of what we call central vestibular issues or central dizziness, um, rather than some of the more simpler to treat issues like a BPPV. I think for, it's not that BPPV isn't um, as common as the central stuff, but a lot of the times people can have the BPPV become resolved, either doing at home exercises um, or going to their primary care and doing a simple maneuver. So oftentimes those patients just don't make it into our clinic. So today when we talk, I want to focus a little bit more on the central vestibular issues that are a little bit more complex um, to treat. Perfect. So let's talk about it. So what kind of central conditions or what kind of presentations do you see with concussion patients? Gotcha. So the first thing we have to understand is how our vestibular system works, right? So we have these sensors in our inner ear that detects when our head is moving, whether it's our head turning or returning in a car. There's some fluid inside of our inner ear that moves and it trips over some some hair cells and just tells our brain that we're moving and so that part's important but then also we have the sensors in our neck right in our neck joints as well as the muscles in our neck and our ankles and what our visual system is telling us right so if we see cars going past we know that a car is going past and it's not necessarily our head moving. okay so all three of these systems, right? Our visual system, what our eyes are telling us, our vestibular system, what our inner ears are telling us, and our proprioceptive system, what our joints and muscles are telling us, need to come into this central area in our brain and synthesize all that information and give us a representation of what's happening in our world and in our body. What dizziness really is, is when there's a mismatch between one or two of these systems and our brain can't figure out which system to trust, right? It's getting three different signals and it can't figure out the mismatch and then patients will feel this nondescript dizziness kind of things. Um, So what's really important in our clinic is to figure out which of these three systems, whether it's one, two, or all three of the systems are, are truly needing to be addressed and treated so that the patient can have all three of them sending the same message so that they can start feeling better. And well, that sounds good. How do you do that? How do you assess it? How do you know if someone has a problem in their neck versus their inner ear versus their vision versus their brain or a combination of it? That's a great question. So we do a lot of different testing in our clinic, Um, right? We'll do like balance testing, eyes open versus eyes closed, right? Trying to rule out or rule in if it's the visual system causing an issue, right? We'll do things on a foam pad where the surface is so pliable that our brain doesn't have time to trust what our ankles are telling us. So it kind of takes out that proprioceptive input. Um, so we can rule in and rule out that system, right? People, especially after concussions, will oftentimes have a whiplash injury. So whether they can have a whiplash injury that looks like a concussion or they can have a concussion that's complicated by a whiplash at the same time, um, then that neck injury can cause dizziness by itself, right? So doing different things like pushing in on the neck, um, doing different head positions, things like that can cause the dizziness in the patient. And that's when we know we really need to focus on treating the neck and getting that system more stable so that the patient can start to feel better. Okay. And as far as treatment, what kind of treatments do you provide for patients who are dizzy? That's um, that's an easy sounding question, but kind of hard <laughs> to 
hard to explain. Um, so again, it depends on which system we need to work on, right? So for some people, it's a ton of balance exercises. For some people, we're doing um, neck adjustments. We're doing neck repositioning maneuvers using laser-guided things on the head, right? So we'll put a headband on, put a laser on that headband, have them move their head around. Um, so we can kind of remap how their neck works using their visual system, assuming that their visual system is, is intact. We can kind of use one of those other systems to heal one of the, the other systems that's not doing so well. Um, and then we do a lot of kind of the classic um, PT things where it's like gaze stability, where you're looking at a dot moving your head back and forth. Um, and the way we do it a little bit differently than, than maybe some of the PTs out there is we bias one side of the vestibular system rather than the other. Um, so rather than doing things both ways, both sides, we might bias it so that we do more things on the right side, right? Maybe like three sets to the right and only two sets to the left um, so that we can be, make things more symmetrical in the brain. And when you look at people or patients that you see with concussions, is there one system that you're typically using more or the people coming in with, you know, with too much reliance on their visual system or their vestibular system or their neck or how do people present typically? after an injury or concussion? It's a good question. So I, I would say the two, um, two different presentations are the most common where that visual system just gets super dominant and patients are really reliant on that. And then they get a lot of motion sickness. They're, you know, they're sitting in a car and they just don't feel great when they see other cars going by or when they're driving. Um, so that visual system become overactive and then also a lot of neck injuries, right? So in a concussion, especially in an athlete, Oftentimes it's after a traumatic hit, whether it's in hockey, they get checked in the boards funny or in football, someone launches at their head and their neck gets whipped back. They can suffer that whiplash injury and have a lot of what's called cervicogenic dizziness where the dizziness is actually coming from the neck itself. Um, so I'd say those are the two most common presentations and they're definitely different in treating. Um, but what's difficult is the two patients, even though they might have totally different reasons for their dizziness, may come in and tell me the same exact thing and describe their dizziness the same way. So one thing I tell a lot of patients is a lot of the time our problem is, is that we're limited by the English language and we just don't have enough words to describe how people are feeling sometimes. Um, where, like I said, two people can have the say the exact same thing, but be feeling totally different things just because dizziness is a is a hard thing to describe so we just use words like dizziness or lightheadedness or just off feeling weird things like that which don't give um the clinician a ton of information so it's really important that we do our tests and figure out where their dizziness is coming from so is there any other symptoms or conditions that you see in your patients after concussion that you find commonly associated with dizziness and are there times sure. where you treat the dizziness that other symptoms can go away or improve also yeah, yeah, for sure. So we see a ton of anxiety associated with the dizziness, um, which makes a ton of sense, right? If you're not feeling like you're stable in your own body, um, it's very common to feel anxious and kind of on edge. And a lot of times as we treat the dizziness, the anxiety will improve or vice versa. A lot of times we'll be treating anxiety in patients and their dizziness will improve. Okay, so it kind of goes both ways. Uh, a lot of the times um, with my patients, as their dizziness improves, their anxiety about moving their head quickly or getting in a car or something like that will, will kind of persist for a while. And I always tell people like the best way to, to kind of diminish that kind of anxiety is to just go out and kind of expose yourself as you're feeling better, right? So as, as their vestibular system has healed some and they're actually physically able to get in a car and go for, a, for an hour car ride on the highway or something, which they might not have been able to do before, they're still anxious about doing it because they believe their brain hasn't improved like it has. So we basically go out and be like, okay, let's try a 30 minute car ride. If you feel good, then let's work up to a 45 minute car ride. And we just keep exposing them so that they can build a trust in their own system. And they can really believe that their own brain is doing better and they can handle those things. And then as they do it over and over and over, they kind of forget that they were never able to do it in the first place. And the anxiety about associated with that will also go away. Perfect. And so let's play a game. I'm going to be a patient and I'm going to yeah. say there's so many types of dizziness and I'll tell you how I'm feeling. And yeah. then you could tell me 
how that relates to um, and then you can tell me what kind of presentations that you might think I might have or what okay. kind of testing might you want to do to see what's going on. Okay. Okay. Um, so I feel dizzy every time I lie down and I feel like I'm spinning or I feel like the world is spinning around me. If I lie down on one side, it's worse than the other. And if I gotcha. just sit still or if I sit up real quick and don't move after a few minutes, it goes away. Gotcha. So you're describing a classic BPPV patient. Um, so for that one, that's when there's a problem in that inner ear. And as you move your head, we kind of talked earlier about the fluid moving. There's some debris that flows in that, um, in the liquid in your inner ear. And it makes that sensor kind of go wild as, as the fluid is moving and it sends the signal too much. And it makes you feel like you continue spinning even after you've stopped moving your head. Um, so this is what we were talking about earlier. These ones are generally pretty, pretty quick to resolve if you're doing the right maneuvers. Um, this is the one I was talking about where you can go in kind of to your primary care. They can diagnose it pretty quick and treat it. And even people can watch a YouTube video and, and do it themselves at home kind of thing. Um, so that's definitely not the most common presentation in our clinic just because it is um, kind of such an easy fix. Um, which is nice as long as you figure out what it is and you're going to a healthcare provider who can identify it um, and get you on the right track to resolving it. And as far as concussions go, it seems plausible that people with concussions can get this type of condition because their head shakes so fast. Is that something you're seeing in the clinic at all? Yeah, so for sure. Again, um, we're not seeing a ton of this in the clinic just because this generally gets resolved before it comes into our clinic, but it's one of the most common forms of dizziness in concussions. Uh, not that there's any normal BPPV, but the, the classic BPPV is on one side only. It's a unilateral type presentation, uh, but in concussions, oftentimes it's bilateral, meaning happening on both sides of the inner ears. And that's because the trauma can be so traumatic or so great that it knocks loose the, the, the debris in both ears. Um, so that type of patient may have the dizziness when they lay down and turn their head to the right or to the left, where a classic BPPV is only when they turn to the right or, you know, they're taking a shower, they tilt their head back to wash their hair um, and their heads, you know, kind of cocked to the right, then they'll get the dizziness, but not necessarily as bad when they turn it to the left. With concussion patients, it can more often be uh, on both sides. Okay. And now I'm another patient. I had a concussion yep. and ever since the concussion, I'm feeling fatigued. I feel my heart going really fast and I feel really lightheaded, especially if I stand up too quickly. Gotcha. So this, this is something called dysautonomia. Um, it's a word that's becoming more and more popular in the healthcare literature. It hasn't been frankly studied enough, but it's becoming more and more popular over the last few years. And it's really common in concussions. Okay. So we're seeing this all the time. And a lot of the problem comes from this lower brainstem area where the vestibular system is living. And it's a, an inability of our brains to detect or properly, properly modulate when we're going from laying to standing, our blood pressure and our heart rate. So what happens is when you're laying down, it's really easy to circulate blood all around your body, especially up to your brain and in your head, right? But when you go and stand up or sit up, now all of a sudden you have to fight gravity and it's hard for the blood to shoot up to our brain, right? So we need to constrict our blood vessels, increase our blood pressure to maintain the blood in our brain. And when that doesn't happen, right? So for some people, they can't get those signals um, modulated correctly. So the blood pressure doesn't increase. So their heart rate starts going crazy, right? It'll increase by 30, 40 beats per minute. Um, and they'll feel really lightheaded. They feel like they need to pass out. Um, sometimes they actually will pass out. And the reason for this is, again, they're not getting enough blood to their brain. So their body's protective mechanism is to pass out, right? So that you become horizontal again, fall back flat, and blood can circulate to your brain. So it, it's a normal protective mechanism that's gone awry because, of course, you know, we should all be able to go from laying to standing without having issues getting blood up to our head. Okay, so I'm going to give you one more. I just had a concussion. Yep. And ever since the concussion, I'm feeling a rocking sensation. I feel unsteady. I feel really nauseous and motion sensitive when I move or when the world moves around me. Um, I don't feel like I'm spinning, but I just really feel unsteady and rocking. 
Gotcha. So this is the classic one that we're seeing in our clinic every day kind of thing. So this one's called PPPD, um, or really it's going to be changed to functional dizziness before too soon, probably. Um, and all this means is it's not a BPPV, it's not a vestibular neuritis, it's not some of the classic things, and there's not a good term for it. So we're kind of throwing it into um, this category. And we're saying that it's dizzy, but we don't really know why. Okay, so what we do know is that it's an issue in that central vestibular system where those three different systems are coming together and we're trying to synthesize the information. And there's the mismatches between the system. Um, so these patients get really motion sensitive, um, you know, lines moving in front of them or a train going past, cars going past, makes them feel really terrible, get some really bad nausea, dizziness, feeling off, and they have trouble doing a lot of things, right? Anything that involves moving, right? If you think about when you're walking, running, jumping, any of those kind of things, your head is doing a lot of movement, it's bobbing back and forth. Um, if your brain is having a hard time interpreting each of those moves, it's going to be really limiting in your quality of life and the things that you want to do um, just because you're not able to move like you were before. Uh, so it's really important for us to, to figure out which of the three systems is the main issue in that BPPD um, so that we can get people back to their lives and living a high quality of life. Perfect. And last question, I'm going to throw a little curveball at you. Okay. How often do you see dizziness? concussions associated with headaches? And why do you think dizziness and headaches are associated? Do you find that by treating the dizziness, a lot of the times you can improve the headaches without doing some therapies you traditionally would do for headaches? Or to say it differently, do you find patients who went through traditional headache and migraine management that have failed in the past start to improve after the dizziness is managed? Yeah, so that, that's another great question. So. Um, the two most common things I'm seeing with dizziness and headaches is the first one is that dysautonomia, right? We talked about how when we're not getting enough blood up to our head that um, patient, patients are feeling lightheaded and faint and those kind of things. They often have headaches as well just because the blood flow to their brain is compromised. So it's causing um, often like a pulsing headache um, that feels like it's pressure in their head. Um, so again, if we treat the dysautonomia, those headaches generally get better. Um, and then the other type of headache that dizziness patients will see is like a tension type headache where their neck gets really tight and it leads up into their head and feels like a hat band squeezing around their head. Um, this is because every time they move their head, they get, um, right, they get more dizzy. So their brain's trying to protect themselves and say, hey, we don't wanna move our head too much. Let's lock it down, right? A lot of my patients will say that I feel like they're turtling, right? This they turtle up, they don't move their head, their neck gets really tight. And this neck tightness um, causes tightness all through the head and causes the muscles to get um, painful and sore and gives them a tension type headache. Um, so doing, doing things for this, right? So the classic headache management for a tension type headache is often, right, chiropractic adjustments, massage, heat, those things. When my patients are doing that, they'll get temporary relief where they feel really good after whichever therapy they're doing. But then generally three hours later, four hours later, the next day kind of thing, it comes back and it's just as bad as it was before they had the adjustment or the massage or, or whatever therapy they did. Um, it's really frustrating for them. They're like, well, I mean, you know, maybe I just need a massage every day. Maybe I need an adjustment every day. Um, and what I try to explain to them is, yeah, that it feels good temporarily, but all you're doing is taking away the compensation your brain has made to make you feel stable and safe. So really what we need to do is we need to treat that vestibular system so that your brain feels more comfortable moving your head around. And you don't need to go into that turtle lockdown kind of position um, so that your neck muscles can be more loose or free to move and you know, therefore not causing pain. Yeah, and it's a big problem because typically when you feel dizzy, you don't want to move. Or if you have sure. neck pain, you don't want to move your head. And if you yep. have headaches, neck pain, and dizziness, the longer you don't move, the worse it's going to get usually. And so you yep. actually have to start doing therapies that start moving the body and the head in a way that's not too symptom provoking, but starts treating them even just from an anxiety standpoint about how they feel yep. about their body, let alone actually creating changes that actually objectively improve someone's yep. physiology. Um, it's really important that you do the right therapies and you don't get too aggressive and you really have a high trained dizziness specialist that you're working with, especially after a concussion with someone who might also have a brain injury. For sure. So thank you so much, Dr. Mack, for being here. And I really appreciate your time. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on.